Hi, uh, my name is Danny Lane. I'm a senior software developer with 8West Consulting here in Cork. Mostly I work server-side web development in languages like Java and C Sharp, but I also do a lot of front-end development in JavaScript and libraries like AngularJS. But today I'm here to talk to you about one of the more interesting technologies I've gotten to work with over the last number of years, and that's MongoDB. Specifically, we're gonna talk about the geospatial queries in MongoDB. And these are the parts of the Mongo querying language that allow you to search for documents in your data store based on their GPS positions. So we've been using MongoDB in production for the last four years. We use it on a number of different projects, but the main one <coughs> we use it on is a product called SafeTracks. It's a product that we developed in-house in association with the um, Irish Coast Guard and the Australian Volunteer Coast Guard. It's a boater safety application that's in use in nine different countries and we've recently opened up the platform to accept location data from different types of devices like drones and wearables. Um, so our platform consumes a lot of location data and having MongoDB as part of our technology stack has been a really positive experience. For those of you who are not familiar with MongoDB, it's a NoSQL data store. It stores documents in a JSON-like format and whereas a more traditional relational, <coughs> excuse me, relational database would store records and tables, MongoDB stores documents in collections. On the right here, we have a, simple, uh, a simplified version of a document from a collection that we maintain called Active Trips. We use it to keep track of boats that are currently out at sea. Um, it's a simple JSON format that's familiar to anybody who's done any sort of web development. A couple of properties, vessel name, engine size. And underneath, there's a, a simple find on this collection. This find is just provided here as a frame of reference for the more complex geospatial queries that we're going to be looking at in the later slides. The structure is DB is a current database, active trips is a collection, and find is the method that we're doing. Uh, we're passing in a JavaScript object and we're just searching on the vessel name. So you'll notice <coughs> there's no location data on this, docu on this document here. So we're going to see the ways that MongoDB supports location data. Formatting is kind of a bit screwed, but. Uh, it supports two different formats. There's a current position here. The first one is an array of longitude followed by latitude. You'll see this referred to as the legacy format in the Mongo docs. This format and the legacy index are still supported, but you don't get the full range of geospatial queries. So we're not going to look at that any further. Instead, we're going to focus on the GeoJSON standard. <coughs> GeoJSON is a standard for geographical data um, interchange. It uses JSON, and it's got representations for a number of different geographical types. We're going to see point and polygon in these examples, a point being a single GPS position, and a polygon being a closed loop, like a border for a county bounds or a state border or something to that effect. It's represented as an array of GPS positions where the first and last position are the same to create a closed loop. <coughs> it also supports other types like line string, multipoint, multi-line string, multi-polygon, but we're not going to see those today. Um, GeoJSON is fairly well adopted. Uh, Google Maps, JavaScript API, Mapbox, Leaflet.js, they all support GeoJSON out of the box. And you'll also find it in um, a lot of the government websites or uh, publicly available data sets will often make GeoJSON one of the formats that you can download. So this is our boat now. We've got a current position here. I've added a GPS coordinates and it's somewhere off the coast of Dungarvan. And we're gonna search for this um, boat in a couple of the next slides. Um, once you've got location data on your document, you're probably gonna want to create a geospatial index. Not all the geospatial queries require a geospatial index, but the one, even the ones that don't, uh, you still get a performance boost when you add the index. So use it if you can. Um, click. Okay, the first query that we're going to look at is near sphere. Um, this is a query that we use in our application. First, I'll tell you what it does, I suppose. Near sphere allows you to search for documents in your data store based on um, where the documents has a GPS position that's near a point that you supply in your query. We use it in our application where a Coast Guard can coordinate a search and rescue operation around a vessel by searching for volunteers that are near um, an incident. So, uh, you know, if there's a boat um, in distress, it's got a GPS position, and then we search for volunteers that are around that area. In this example here, I'm doing a search on the active trips collection. 
I'm searching the current position as a property, near sphere is a type of query, and the geometry is just a G the GPS position that I'm searching on. That coordinates is centered in Kinsale, and the max distance here is 100,000. That unit's in meters, so we're looking within 100 kilometers of Kinsale, and that's kind of within that red uh, circle there. Max distance and min distance are optional filters on this query. You're probably going to want to use one of them because if you don't, it'll return all the documents in your collection. Um, the result sets are ordered as well uh, in uh, how close they are to the point that you supply in your query. So that's also quite useful. The second query that we're going to look at is Geo Within. And Geo Within allows you to search for documents where the GPS position on your document is within a bounded area that you supply. So we use this in our application, or we could use this if we had defined a geofence around each Coast Guard flotilla. So we could say boats that are within this geofence or within this bounded area are under the responsibility of this Coast Guard and of this Coast Guard outpost. And if there's an emergency or an escalation, we could treat the, um, the emergencies slightly differently by escalating them lo to local Coast Guard first before raising a general alarm. So the syntax again, we're talking, it's still just an active trip stuff find on the collection, current position, we're searching within and I'm passing the polygon there. Um, that's the triangle. So the four GPS positions is the first and last position repeated and that makes up the, um, that closes the loop for that triangle. The last query that we're gonna look at is geointersects. Geointersects is somewhat similar to Geo within, except it will return documents where the uh, geospatial shape information on your document overlaps somewhat with the geospatial shape in the query that you supply. So again, we could use this if we had defined, um, uh, we'll say geofences for each Coast Guard flotilla, and then we represented our trip as a multi-line, we could see which uh, Coast Guard flotillas this trip sailed through, so maybe see which, um, which Coast Guard flotillas have the most traffic and need the most, most funding or something to that effect. In this example here, I'm not searching on a boat. Instead, I got the geojson information for the county bounds from Ireland on, from one of the Irish government websites because it was available as geojson. It was just a couple of lines of JavaScript to copy that data into a counties collection, so I'm searching on counties here instead of the active trips. Um, this collection has 32 documents, and each document has a polygon that represents the county borders. So those black lines are the polygons from the Mongo database, and it's made up of, of, made up of about a half million GPS points. And I'm just searching, saying, give me all the counties that intersect with this red triangle, and it'll return the, those uh, 16 counties there. Um, Again, I think that's quite powerful functionality for very little effort. And that's typical of what I think makes MongoDB a good value proposition for teams that need to work with geospatial data. On the last slide, I've got a number of points, some other things that I like working with MongoDB. Um, reasons why I think it's a good value proposition for teams in general, regardless of whether or not they need to work with geospatial data. So stuff like the... Uh, Inbuilt MapReduce, being able to write the JavaScript functions or incremental MapReduce on, uh, on a collection. Uh, the aggregation pipeline for building up um, staged and data transformations and queries on a collection. The replica sets, it's trivial to set up a replication set in MongoDB compared to some of the other database technologies I've worked with. And the ability to shard large collections of data across multiple machines is also quite easy. <laughs> This is nine minutes. This is like the fastest I've ever gone through this. <laughs> I must apologize. I must have just rifled through it. So this is padding here where I, where I pad out the, um, you know, look at the docs, read the, read the manual, and the GeoJSON spec is there as well. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what I've got. And um, I'll be around if anybody has any questions. And thanks for your time.